hello internet welcome to another antenna tutorial in this tutorial we'll study about characteristic impedance and propagation constant they are of supreme importance to antennas because both in receivers and transmitters the immediate connecting element to antenna is the transmission line on one end and of course air is on the other end but before we discuss the parameters associated with any transmission line we need to understand another fundamental concept which is known as lumped elements and distributed elements now we'll talk about these two with examples for example we have a long wire now this wire is a conducting wire but because of the virtue of the length of the wire even though the wire is conducting it has some resistance associated with it now this resistance is of no significance when the length of the wire is small but if you increase the length of the wire to significant levels for example to a scale of kilometers the resistance associated with the wire becomes significant and on the other hand there is something called a lumped element which we all know and which we've all seen as components as semiconductor components we know that there are semiconductor components specially designed to offer resistance in a circuit and an important part is even if we achieve or get a resistance of around 100 ohm with a wire of 2 kilometers we cannot practically use it in our circuits the usage of resistance from a component can only be achieved through lumped components but at the same time the the resistance of of a conducting wire cannot be ignored because it is distributed over the in, entire length of the wire and it surely hinders the transmission of the signal as the signal propagates along the length of the wire so that resistance which is being offered by a long long length of wire distributed over its entire length is known as distributed resistance and another important point is that the units of distributed resistance is also not the same as com as compared to resistance resistance of a lumped element is expressed in terms of ohm whereas distributed resistance is expressed in terms of ohms per kilometer or ohms per meter and thinking on the same lines we we now can form an analogy that any wire which has a significant length would also offer some distributed inductance and it will also offer some distributed capacitance and distributed conductance so once we are able to comprehend that these properties they get 
embedded into the transmission line because of the virtue of the uh, the characteristics of the material then we can understand that some amount of opposition is offered to the flow of signal over the transmission line and that opposition that that resistance that obstruction to the signal is known as the characteristic impedance of transmission line we do we have not intentionally put that resistance we do not wish it to be there but it still is there and that has to be countered for and how do we represent this characteristic impedance of a transmission line it is represented using the <coughs> the equivalent circuit of a transmission line which is drawn as resistance and inductances in series and capacitances and conductances in parallel so we'll have a long hole of such combinations over the length of the transmission line so you'll find these components their inherited properties all along the length of the transmission line may it be a transmission line of coaxial cable or rectangular or a circular waveguide or optical fiber cable anything so you'll find these components there not visible but surely there and together these components they form the characteristic impedance which is given by the formula z not and this shall be the formula for characteristic impedance in terms of the primary constants these are known as primary constants so key point number 1 any transmission line will have some primary constants known as distributed resistance per unit length distributed inductance per unit length distributed capacitance per unit length and distributed conductance per unit length so these r l g and c featured in the characteristic impedance equation are the primary constants now if you know the values of these primary constants in real or practical life or in a numerical then you would you'll be able to calculate the value of z not characteristic impedance how much impedance is being offered by the transmission line per unit length to the flow of the sinusoidal signal which it intends to carry and on the other hand uh the the second important characteristic parameter propagation constant of a transmission line is given by gamma and it can be expressed in terms of the primary constants as uh, r plus j omega l and g plus j omega c and both these components uh, together they form the secondary components secondary constants more precisely to say 
of a transmission line gamma is the propagation constant and z naught is the characteristic impedance and of course when you solve these two values you'll get the um, tertiary constants out of gamma you can find because we know that gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta and alpha is the attenuation constant and beta is the phase constant we can find alpha and beta by segregating the real and imaginary parts out of uh, the computed values of gamma once we are able to calculate gamma will will end up having a real part and will end up having an imaginary part real part would equate to alpha the imaginary part would equate to beta and alpha would represent attenuation constant and beta would represent phase constant and yes uh, from beta other things can also be calculated like beta is 2 pi by lambda and the circle goes on and on but the primary thing to understand here is that transmission lines are eventually made up of some materials and materials do have inherent properties of inductance capacitance resistance and conductance which we cannot ignore at any cost and they result in in the formation of the characteristic impedance of the transmission line the quality of the transmission line would depend upon these parameters how how indigenously are they made and uh, that would determine the cost of the transmission line also and i hope this tutorial on the important parameters of transmission line was of some help and if you liked the content of this video and if you wish to uh, see more such content in the future please consider subscribing to the channel and thank you for stopping by and watching this video you have a good day good life bye